Are you confused as to when to put your seeds in the ground when it comes to spring in colder climates? Then this video is for you. Rolling intro. In this video, we're gonna go through what crop to start when based on your zone. I've even included guides that you can screenshot to use for your gardening purposes. You can share them. I don't mind, but I'm also gonna teach you how to read seed packets themselves and exactly how to navigate when to start something indoors and when to start something outside. What I won't be talking about is the intricacies of zones themselves. If you're looking for a video on that, I'll leave a link in the description below. I went through exactly what the maps look like, how to go about reading them. If you already know what your zone is and where you're located, be sure to check out the timestamps below. I'll timestamp each zone in the gardening map for that. Once we have our zone, we have three pieces of super crucial information. We know the growing free days or the frost free days within our summers. We know when the frost is expected to lift based on historical records and when the frost is expected to come back in the fall. Those two things help us with when to seed outdoors and also when to harvest. Those three factors is actually what I use to develop the schedule specific to cropping in Canada. Let's start with starting seeds indoors. If we know when the frost free days end for our region, we can then simply just read the packet to determine when it's time to start those seeds in the seed pods, such as the ones I have behind me. We'll use the example of zone three. So for me, I'm in zone three. I want to grow giant pumpkins that take 120 days to grow. It'll tell me on the seed packet itself. Generally, it'll be in this bottom corner right here. A giant pumpkin takes around 120 growing degree days. That means I need to start my pumpkin indoors because zone three only has exactly 120 growing degree days. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just plant it on the first day of May 15th? It's 120 days for the fruit to become mature enough to consume. That doesn't mean I'm going to have my giant, ripe, beautiful, huge pumpkin at that time. But I made it really easy to understand the seed packet dates by providing legend kind of at the bottom left of the PDF. When it comes to starting seeds outdoors and we know our zone, we also know when the frost is officially supposed to be done for the spring. So for zone three and four, that's May 15th. So if our packet has less than 80 days, we know that we can actually start those outside. So for example, the peas have a 64 to 67 day window. That means these can be started outdoors and don't need to be started inside. Those can be put directly into the ground May 15th or later. Now, that doesn't mean you get to just forget it and leave it. You should still watch your weather in your area and make sure it's not dipping below freezing. If it freezes and you have leaves and an actual plant growing, you're gonna wanna run outside and just throw a blanket over top. That's just gonna prevent it from getting frostbitten. Anyone who lives in Saskatchewan or zone three knows that this is a thing and has had this happen. Sometimes we will get a frost night in the middle of June. So just keep that in mind. May 15th isn't a cut and dry frost free time. Um, you can have frost after that time. When it comes to transplanting plants outdoors, you do not wanna do this on May 15th. The reason being is that these plants are used to being around 21 degrees Celsius all the time. So when it comes to transplanting, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your evenings are staying above plus five. That's going to ensure the survival of say a tomato plant. Sometimes that can be first week of June before you're able to put those plants outdoors, but don't jump the gun, have patience. Now let's talk about continuous cropping. On the charts, you may realize that I have a times two besides some of the crops. That means that that crop can potentially be planted twice within the same growing season. The way you know that a crop can be planted twice in the same growing season is through, again, the days that are on the bottom of the pack. Carrots are an example of that. Here in Saskatchewan, where I am, zone three, we have 120 growing degree days. And because carrots are actually a cold climate crop, 
we can get two cycles of carrots out of the same area of soil. And we know that based on the number of days. We have 55 days here. Beets are another one. So continuous cropping essentially means we're going to harvest all of our carrots midsummer, and then we're going to replant midsummer as well. So continuous cropping is an option if you look at your seed packs and you read that the growing degree days are a lot less than what your total number of frost free days are for your zone. Now let's talk about the zones themselves. I'm zone three, so let's start there. This is what your growing schedule is going to look like. On this schedule, you're going to see your total number of frost free days, when your frost is expected to lift, when it's expected to come back, various different types of crops, when to start them indoors, transplant, and then harvest. And then it's also going to show you in the bottom corner how to read the seed packets and my recommendation how to go about when starting them indoors versus outside. Now, I understand there are challenges with zone three, and I want to encourage you not to jump the gun when it comes to starting seeds indoors. It is all too common for me to see people starting tomatoes in February. While there's nothing wrong with that, you need to have the proper setup to do so. So, that means you have to have a grow light, such as the one I have behind me, but you also need to have airflow. That means you're going to have to hold off on planting your tomatoes sometimes to the end of March or mid-April. For me, I start mine mid-April, and I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people, but I don't have the airflow, and honestly, those grow lights, as good as they are, they're still not enough for me to ensure that I'm gonna have a healthy crop. You will be blown away living in zone three in Canada, how quickly a seedling is gonna take off once you have it outside. Tomatoes and peppers especially. Once they're transplanted outside in the zone three in Canada, they take off like wildflower as long as you carted them off properly. You're not going to lose anything by just holding off a little bit. Zone four, your planting schedule is going to look like this. You also have your total number of days you can grow, your start date and your finish date, as well as all the different crops when to start inside, transplant outdoors, and harvest, and then your key at the bottom on how to read the actual plant tags. You look very similar to zone three, and there's a reason for that. Zone four is a milder version of zone three. Zone three gets very, very cold and very, very hot. Zone four, you stay within the same temperature range for the most part. That means something like tomatoes or peppers aren't going to explode once you put them out in the garden like they would in zone three. However, there is a benefit to your zone. With a milder climate, if you have a cold frame or some form of coverage for your crop, you can actually start your crops May 15th on the dot or maybe even a little bit earlier. Zone five, your growing schedule looks like this. Now for your zone, you have a lot longer growing season than compared to zone three. On yours, you have your total number of growing degree days, your frost free to your, your frost free days, and then also when to harvest, when to seed, and when to transplant. If you have cold fringe or some form of coverage, you're also able to start your crops outdoors a lot. Zone six, this is what your schedule looks like. Don't show your schedule to anyone in zone three, four, or even five, they're going to drool with envy. You have an awesome amount of frost-free days. Um, when your summer starts to when your summer ends, it's very broad. And in a lot of cases, you can get away with three sets of continuous crops. Mind blown. So make sure you take advantage of that and you use the planting schedule to your advantage. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. If you liked my video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, comment, it helps me so much. I'm trying to build my YouTube channel, I'm trying to up the quality information, this is my passion. And I kinda wanna start like a community, um, and a side hobby. So if you would do that, it would be fantastic. Ella would appreciate as well. Um, and I will talk to you guys next time. Have an awesome growing season. 
and enjoy the sunshine that's finally come. I will talk to you guys later. Have a fantastic day, evening, night, whatever it may be. Bye! Oh hey there, are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome plant videos.